The Select Subcommittee on the Coronavirus Pandemic will come to order. I want to welcome everyone this morning. Pursuant to Committee on Oversight and Accountability Rule 7D, members of the committee may participate in today's Select Subcommittee hearing for purposes of questions. At the discretion of the chair and pursuant to an agreement with the Committee on Energy and Commerce, the chairman and ranking member of the Committee on Energy and Commerce, Subcommittee on Oversight and Investigations, Mr. Morgan Griffith and Ms. Kathy Castor are permitted to participate in today's hearings for the purposes of questions and give three-minute opening statements. Without objection, pursuant to Clause 4A3A of House Resolution 5, in Clause 2J2C of House Rule 11, the Chair may recognize staff of the Select Subcommittee for questions for equal periods of time, not to exceed 30 minutes. Pursuant to Rule 7D of the Committee on Oversight and Accountability, Mr. Jordan and Mr. Moskowitz, members of the full committee, may participate in today's hearing for the purposes of questions. <coughs> I would like to remind members that the issues we are debating today are important ones that members feel deeply about. While vigorous disagreement is part of the legislative process, members are reminded that we must adhere to established standards of decorum in debate. There is a reminder that it is a violation of House rules and the rules of this committee to engage in personalities regarding other members or to question the motives of a colleague. Remarks, on that, remarks of that type are not permitted by the rules and are not in keeping with the best traditions of our committee. The chair will enforce these rules of decorum at all times and urges all members to be mindful of their remarks. Finally, without objection, the chair may declare a recess at any time. I now recognize myself for the purpose of making an opening statement. Good morning, and welcome, Dr. Fauci. First, I want to thank you for your decades of public service. You served your country through multiple epidemics, pandemics, and health crises. I do want to say I'm sorry about the threats that you have received. As someone who's been shot at and received threats as well, my heart goes out to you. This should never happen in America. Regardless of any disagreements we may have, you chose to serve, and I want to extend our appreciation and gratitude. I want to thank you publicly for working with our doctor's caucus during Operation Warp Speed and the time you spent with us and Dr. Collins. I also want to thank you for your willing cooperation with the select subcommittee. You have voluntarily sat for more than 14 hours of testimony and are appearing voluntarily today. This is more than we can say about other witnesses we have called, and we appreciate it. Dr. Fauci, we're here to investigate the COVID-19 pandemic and to explore lessons learned, positive or negative, and to better prepare for future pandemics. Simply put, America cannot move forward, though, without looking back. We must know what went right and what went wrong in order to best ingrain proficiencies and remedy deficiencies. In 15 months, the Select Subcommittee has sent more than 115 investigative letters, conducted 30 transcribed interviews, resulted in hundreds of hours of testimony, held, including today, 27 hearings or briefings, and reviewed more than one and a half million pages of documents. We aren't here to throw the baby out with the bathwater. That's not the intent. We are following the facts holding wrongdoers accountable, and planning for a better, more prepared future. <clears throat> Beginning early in 2020, you became the figurehead of public health. There were drinks named after you. You got bobbleheads made in your likeness. You were on the cover of Vogue throughout the first pitch at a Washington Nationals game. Almost overnight, you became a celebrity and a household name, in addition to being a public health official. Americans from coast to coast and beyond listen to your words. And this is where I think we could have done better. And this goes to both sides of the aisle. We should have been more precise. We should have used words and phrases that are accurate and not misleading. And we should have been honest, especially about what we didn't know. Dr. Fauci, I'm not a virologist. 
But I am a physician, and like most physicians, we are constantly learning, which is why we do continuing med medical education, and we always seek new information. We learn new things based on new data, and we want to give our patients the best possible care based on new findings and improvements in science. At a time when you were prompting the Proximal Origin paper, whose focus was to, quote, disprove the lab leak theory, end quote, I was in lockdown researching with another physician in Ohio to try and understand the pathology, <coughs> the affected physiology, and what treatments worked, and even how to diagnose COVID before we had specific COVID tests. My friend even made a phone call to an infectious disease doctor in China looking for help. As well, during that time, we discovered the Barrick Shi 2015 article on creating a chimera using gain of function type technology. While policy decisions should have been based on scientific data, some frankly were not. The burdensome six foot social distancing rule did not have sufficient scientific report. In your words, it just sort of appeared. Distancing made sense, but the six feet was arbitrary. Even Dr. Collins said he still hasn't seen any empirical evidence to support the six foot rule. A rule that shut down schools and businesses. A rule that will have negative ramifications for decades. As the pandemic wore on, more mandates also just sort of appeared. But the Amer American public didn't get to see the scientific data to support these mandates. Americans were aggressively bullied shamed and silenced for merely questioning or debating issues such as social distancing, masks, vaccines, or the origins of COVID. Many Americans were willing to comply with the 15 days to slow the spread and understood the necessity of banning travel from certain countries in an attempt to slow down the virus. But many Americans became very frustrated when components of those 15 days stretched into years. And it should not have been the case that Americans were forced to comply with oppressive mandates when those who chose to illegally cross our southern border were not. Or when Governor Newsom or Governor Whitmer were throwing parties at nice restaurants. Not a good look. Americans do not hate science but Americans know hypocrisy when they see it. Dr. Fauci, under your leadership, the United States Health Agencies adopted specific policy aims as a single dogmatic truth without the benefit of debate, out of a desire for a single narrative. Dr. Fauci, you once said, if you disagree with me, you disagree with science. Science doesn't belong to any one person. I was never taught that science turns a blind eye to hypotheses. They serve to be proven or disproven, and done so with irrefutable facts, if able. It was interesting that you chose not to pursue an aggressive and transparent scientific investigation of both natural spillover and lab leak. We have been investigating both hypotheses. You testified before the select subcommittee in your transcribed interview that the lab leak theory was not a conspiracy theory. You embraced the proximal origin letter. It wasn't necessarily a full peer-reviewed research paper, but you embraced proximal origin letter and you shared it with the public from the White House lawn. You stated during your transcribed interview that you did not review published articles that considered a potential lab leak of COVID-19. This is especially concerning if the works in question were conducted at a more risky and less safe BSL-2 lab. Nevertheless, any dissent from your chosen scientific position was immediately labeled as anti-science. Anything less than complete submission to the mandates could cost you your livelihood, your ability to go into, into public, your child's ability to attend school. Families were thrown off planes and shamed when their two-year-olds struggled to wear a mask. 
Children with disabilities lost access to therapy that they and their families depended on. Students were out of the classroom and told to attend school remotely, even when the science clearly demonstrated it was safe for them to go back in the classroom. This harmed low-income students the most. And how were single-parent households supposed to teach their own children and work at the same time? Dr. Fauci, you oversaw one of the most invasive regimes of domestic policy the U.S. has ever seen, including mask mandates, school closures, coerced vaccination, social distancing of six feet, and more. We've learned many lessons. Our early fear and confusion was understandable. COVID-19 was clearly a novel virus. Under your leadership, NIAID allowed disgraced characters like Dr. Peter Daszak to use millions in taxpayer dollars to conduct risky gain-of-function experiments in Wuhan, China. The actions of EcoHealth and Dr. Daszak call into question the integrity of NIAID's policies and procedures as a whole, as well as your role, Dr. Fauci, as NIAID's director. You did sign off on his research grant. We need to know why, Dr. David Morins, your direct report for more than two decades, assisted Dr. Daszak in avoiding oversight and scrutiny and said that you were involved. Your senior advisor and seemingly your chief of staff repeatedly attempted to evade transparency laws to shield information from public scrutiny. We have senior officials from your office in their own writing discussing breaking federal law, deleting official records, and sharing private government information with grant recipients. The office you directed and those serving under your leadership chose to flout the law and bragged about it. Why did you allow your office to be unaccountable to the American people? You were the highest paid person in the government. This makes you more accountable to the people, not less. Dr. Fauci, whether intentional or not, you became so powerful that any disagreements the public had with you were forbidden and censored on social and most legacy media time and time again. This is why so many Americans became so angry, because this was fundamentally un-American. If I make a mistake, I answer to the people of Ohio who elected me and to my own conscience. When you and your agency made mistakes, Dr. Fauci, what happened? We all need to be held accountable. Sometimes it's as simple as saying we were wrong. You took the position that you presented the science. Your words came across to so many people as final, final and as infallible in matters <laughs> pertaining to the pandemic. But such rigid demands of an ideologically diverse people like Americans, shattered public trust in American health institutions. Because I said so has never been good enough for Americans, and it never will be. It's built into the American spirit. We have a thirst for information, a drive for advancement. Americans were first in flight. We landed on the moon. We've cured diseases. You've been part of that. And we made innumerable discoveries and explorations that forever changed humanity. Americans do not want to be indoctrinated. They want to be educated. And they prefer to make their health decisions in conjunction with the doctor that they know and trust. To be successful, our federal public health institutions must be accountable to the people again. To be successful, our health organizations must, must do what they are supposed to do, protect Americans. I look forward to a robust and on-topic discussion. I thank you. I would now like to recognize Ranking Member Ruiz for the purpose of making an opening statement. Thank you, Mr.